Hello and welcome, I'm Alas Gerjuk and you're watching Head to Head with UATV. Snap parliamentary elections in Ukraine are scheduled to be held on July 21st. The decree to dismiss the Ukrainian parliament has been published on the presidential website. To discuss this and other decisions of the new president, we welcome to our studio today Alexei Haran, research director at the Democratic Initiatives Foundation, professor of political science at Kiev Mohila Academy. Hello and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for invitation. It's always a pleasure to have you in the studio. So first of all, let's start with the discussion on this scandal around the Ukrainian parliament and um, around the decision, the first decision of Volodymyr Zelensky to dissolve the parliament. There was a lot of controversy uh, going on around this issue, whether it's legitimate or not legitimate. So how could you comment on this? Yeah, I, I, I will try to correct you. I am not talking about the scandal in the parliament. I would, I would rather talk about scandalous decision of president to dissolve the parliament, because okay. according to uh, many experts in constitutional law, there is no ground for dismissal of the parliament. Because uh, the question is about whether coalition exists or not. And from formal point of view, the coalition was dissolved only several days ago. Yeah, on May 17th. Was, yes, which was declared, which was declared in the Rada. So it was open, it was obvious, and now the parliament has 30 days to form the new coalition. However, President Zelensky and his team they are trying to persuade that there were no coalition for quite a long time. Yes, and because they want probably to dissolve the Honorada exactly, before the exactly. six months term. So there is a political the background election. for that, because now the popularity of Zelensky is very high. So he would like to have these snap elections in order to have this to capitalize on the moods, on actual on mm -hmm. populist moods of voters. So he could benefit. To have, on he this. will benefit definitely because it's important to understand that there is no real party. And his, his and party, his which is party, called the yeah. yeah, servant of the people, is not a real party, it's just a virtual one. Okay, so this is a paradox. So they there, there is no party, but there is a high rating of this party. Mm -hmm. And Zelensky would try to capitalize on that. So instead of waiting for regular elections in, in the fall, uh, he's trying to have the snap election. So there's political reasoning for that. Uh, talking about legal dis legal debate, well, if we have the legal debate, I believe that uh, Zelensky didn't have the right to dismiss the parliament, but if there are any arguments for that, they should be uh, decided in the court, in the constitutional court. Yes, and so uh, the chairman the of uh, the Verkhona Rada, he actually said that uh, Verkhona Rada is uh, appealing to the constitutional yeah. court, so we're so going to wait is, for the decision. This is, this is the right approach. So mm -hmm. if you have constitutional debate, you apply to the Constitutional Court and it's for the Constitutional Court to, de to decide what is right or what is constitutional, what is not constitutional. Uh, if actually, because uh, uh, the campaign, electoral campaign is starting already, so the question is, could the Constitutional Court reverse the tide and declare, if because if it's declared that the decision was unconstitutional, it would mean that the campaign would be stopped. So mm -hmm. there is a possibility for that. However, so the election wouldn't be held in the end of July? No. If, if there would be the, the decision of the decision. Constitutional Court. However, uh, there could be a political pressure on the Constitutional Court and uh, the judges, they may be blackmailed, so they may decide, well, this decision was constitutional. Or they may not be very quick in adopting decision. Actually, they may, it may take months and then the next months, three months, and they would declare the decision after the elections. There could be a play here. So we what are do not, you foresee happening in Ukraine? Pardon me? What do you foresee happening in Ukraine? What scenario would you foresee? No, I, can, I cannot tell you so because actually if the uh, judges of the Constitutional Court would stick to constitution, my impression is that they may reverse the tide. Mm -hmm. There were examples in the Ukrainian history when constitutional court played very important and positive role 
uh, in the year of 2000, President Kuchma tried to increase his, uh, his authority and he conducted the constitutional referendum. However, the position of constitutional court was very clear. They said, okay, you won the referendum, you may have it, and actually Kuchma won the referendum. But then the constitutional court said, okay, and now you are to go through the parliament. You need to have two-thirds constitutional majority in the parliament, and Kuchma wasn't able to do that. So basically it means that there, there, there are things in Ukraine where the judges, the parliament, the constitutional court may play a very important power, uh, positive role to, uh, to prevent Mm -hmm. the slide of the country to authoritarianism. However, there were also different examples when the Constitutional Court uh, supported very unconstitutional steps, which happened yes. in the year of 2010, when the Constitutional Court actually cancelled the reform of the Constitution and increased the authority of President Yanukovych. And this is what yes, was this one was of the reasons of for Euromaidan revolution. It's going to be actually. very interesting to observe how this situation is going to be unfolding because we do know that constitutional Court has newly um, appointed a, a, a chief judge, and um, she uh, was appointed. Uh, she was selected uh, in the end of the term of uh, former President Petro Poroshenko. But also, on the other hand, we do understand that if the decision um, of uh, the current president Volodymyr Zelensky is going to be blocked by the Constitutional Court, this going to reflect on his image as a president of Ukraine because it's his first decision to yes, dissolve sure. the Verkhovna so, Rada and this might even ruin the the, the hopes of uh, of his supporters. Um, to a certain extent, yes. Look, uh, the present head of the Constitutional Court is not a man of, uh, of woman of uh, so which woman? represents uh, the Poroshenko interest Rizhi. of Poroshenko. Yes, no. yes, I do not and say it's, that, it's but she's not it's, it's very, it's very, it's very transitional figure, actually. Uh, That's why it's going to be interesting. Yes, so, and by the way, actually, she was appoint, appointed to the Constitutional Court under, under President Yanukovych. So, actually, I have, I have doubts whether she will be tough enough to, uh, to, go say, to say no to President, to president. Zelensky. So I am not sure about that. Well, but also, what I am sure is that it's necessary to apply to the Constitutional Court and let the Constitutional Court say the final word. Mm -hmm. Well, Also, there was a discussion between uh, the current President Zelensky and the faction leaders, and uh, we do know that some of them stated, for example, Yulia Tymoshenko uh, stated that uh, actually coalition doesn't exist since 2016, so basically mm -hmm. This is uh, one of the reasons for uh, for president uh, to dissolve uh, the the parliament. How could you comment on this? Did coalition exist or not? Oh, it's 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 a very complicated issue. I'm not sure if we can go into details. Look, first of all, it's in the it's uh, in the interest political interest of Tomashenko to have these elections, and. Uh, it's her long term, long time position that there's no coalition in the parliament. Basically, what we can say that uh, um, de facto the coalition was less, uh, the number of the deputies in the coalition was less than it's demanded by constitution, de facto. However, the government worked, the parliament worked, there were decisions, so there was kind of situational majority. And the fact that coalition ceased to exist was never formally declared. And this is important, very important for legal issues. It's mm -hmm. not only just, you know, to watch and say that, okay, something is going wrong. You need to have a legally fixed decision. The legally fixed decision was, uh, remind me, May, May 17th, 17th, May 17th yeah, when People's Front when, yeah, when coalition was formally dissolved. And this was very clear step and formal decision, and now parliament received the 30 days for coalition again. But this is a debate, th this can be debate among the lawyers. So 
uh, in the constitutional court. There, are, there is political reasoning for having or not having uh, snap elections. Mm -hmm. Again, Zelensky is in favor of that. Uh, uh, Tymoshenko is in favor of that. Some block of people, Petroposhenko yeah, is some also people in are favor. saying that actually Poroshenko's block may be also interested. So formally, formally, uh, Poroshenko block and some others they said that uh, we do not agree with dismissal of the parliament, but, but we are uh, but ready we to are ready, participate. In we the are election. ready to participate in the elections. But the question is, what is the electoral system? Yes, and we are smoothly moving on to uh, today's extraordinary uh, session of the Ukrainian parliament where uh, the MPs, um, well, had a chance to um, uh, review and to adopt uh, some amendments to the uh, electoral code of Ukraine because we do know that this is one of uh, Zelensky's demands uh, that the parliamentary elections should be organized uh, according to the new electoral code but it looks like Verkhovna Rada uh, ignored uh, uh, Zelensky's demands and didn't put on the agenda a draft law on amending uh, the electoral legislation um, does this signal anything to Mr. Zelensky and uh, yeah. to us? Actually, what Mr. Zelensky wanted to have, he wanted to have a trick, a real trick, because uh, he promised during his campaign to have open party slates. And the electoral system with open party slates is reflected in the electoral code, which passed the first reading. So in the Rada, actually, it's already done, it's already there. So what is necessary to do to have this electoral code in the second reading? But to do that, there's no time, because Zelensky uh, declared the dismissal of the parliament. So what he suggested, he suggested, okay, let's change this a little, let's have proportional system, but based on closed party slate. And this is not what President Zelensky, what candidate Zelensky promised. So basically, I see here that Parliament reacted in the right way. Mm -hmm. So he just rejected one of the tricks uh, suggested by the team of the new president. So if President really would like to have elections based on new system, he shouldn't dissolve the Parliament and he should give a time to the parliament to finalize the electoral code, which is already there in the parliament. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, um, this was uh, um, Zelensky's uh, um, electoral promise to the Ukrainian nation, but also I would like to remind that uh, one of his uh, um, well, strong arguments uh, during his election campaign was that he would never appoint his friends or relatives to the important positions um, in the government, in the ministries, in the presidential administration, etc., uh, which would mean a change in Ukraine's post-Soviet uh, governance style. But we do uh, follow on uh, the uh, latest uh, appointments, and we see that the, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky appointed his legal advisor, Andrei Bohdan, as head of the presidential administration. And also in this uh, presidential administration um, will be working Serhii Trofimov, Ruslan Rabashapka, Kirill Tymoshenko, and Yuri Kostyuk. Basically, Kostyuk is the screenwriter uh, for this TV series, Servant of the People. Um, then uh, Kirillo Timoshenko, he is the head of the TV production company Good Media, so basically this could be also a friend of Zelensky. Uh, then uh, Serhii Trofimov, um, he um, is an executive producer of uh, uh, Studio Quartal 95. <laughs> we have another appointment which is really, you know, striking, is the first deputy of the security service of Ukraine is actually Zelensky's lawyer and uh, main business partner, Mr. Bakanov, also from show business. So this is incredible. Actually, he is appointing people which is from his close circle, in his, circle even. In, in, in his own business. And yes. that's the problem. And regarding Mr. Bogdan, this is also a problem because this is also a legal advisor to Olega Kolomoisky. And now he's appointed yes. uh, as chief of staff. Uh, and moreover, because... Uh, what risks can it mean for Ukraine? Uh, 
let's let, let, but let's let, speak let, briefly let me add because we only this is very minutes. important because according to the law on illustration of the power those people who worked in the administration of uh, president yanukovych and government yanukovych of yanukovych more than one year they may not take they cannot take positions in public service and bogdan is one of them yes, so what is, is what it means for me is it's actually a bad sign that he is appointing people without uh, you know based on principle okay this is my friend mm -hmm. and not based on is, background and experience but based on his uh, um, personal relations with the yes and uh, yeah and business connections person. so this is this is not frankly this is not a good uh, good news and there is a strong criticism among experts but the question is how it will be reflected in the public opinion because mm -hmm. again the rise of populism was very high in the presidential elections and there is a risk that if we have snap elections then the populist tide may go on actually well this is very interesting let's see how the situation will keep unfolding keep developing yeah it's important to remember that we conducted democratic elections we are democratic yeah, we this have is problems. The, main, the most positive we, part. We it. have problems, but we still have checks and balances, and it's very important to keep these democratic checks and balances. Thank you so much for your comments. Thank, Thank you. you for invitation. That was Alexei Haran, professor of political science at Kiev Mohela Academy. Thank you for watching Head to Head, and stay tuned for more with UATV.